What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today we are back with the F1 or shall I say F2 2019 career mode series we're here for the Monaco Grand Prix it's been a bit of a break and uh, the only reason I can give for that is the actual F1 career mode taking priority these last few days but we're here for the Monaco Grand Prix we're leading the championship heading into Monaco let's see if we can win the jewel in the F2 crown. We're here at the Circuit de Monaco for qualifying. Now, pole position is always an accomplishment, but on a track like this, getting that fastest lap really means something profound. Who, I wonder, is going to be able to claim that prestige today? Let's hope that it's us. It does sound a little bit weird saying F2, and uh, I, I, I don't know if Monaco holds that same prestige here in F2, but I, I'm sure it means just as much to the drivers nonetheless. This is a special racetrack, no matter what series you are in. So we're going to load the Monaco setup uh, and hope that it does apply well to this car. It should do. The setups that we've been running so far, albeit F1 setups, have been applying well to us. Uh, I mean, it can't be hurting because we are leading the drivers' championship at this stage. But qualifying lap looks like it's going okay at the moment. We're not going to be slow around this circuit. And uh, that is proven true, even in the one-shot qualifying lap. Fourth place, not bad. Welcome to one of, if not the most iconic race circuit in Formula 2. A track with absolutely no room for error. A track that requires every bit of skill these young drivers can muster. We're getting ready for lights out here in Monte Carlo. Alongside me today, I'm delighted to welcome back to the commentary box the 2012 GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. There looks to be a challenging race ahead of the drivers today, Davide. With that in mind, what are you looking out for today? Well, Alex, I want to see how the drivers at the back of the grid are going to roll down. They'll need to make an impact in the early stages, and they're probably hoping for a bit of luck at the start. We may see some bold maneuvers out there today. Okay, don't try anything silly into one. It's going to be crazy in there. Just do your best to stay out of trouble. And stay out of trouble, I will endeavour to do. Welcome to the grid of the Monaco Grand Prix. We've got some rain, and it looks like it's going to dry up towards the end of the race, so hopefully uh, that comes maybe sooner than anticipated, because I don't know what my pace is going to be like in these conditions. Away we go for the feature race of Monaco. And it looks like an okay start. A lot of wheel spin in third gear. There's a lot of torque that kind of kicks in at the high end and that's not only off the start but you'll notice this as we go throughout this race uh, third gear is very very tricky for myself but we managed to hold on to our starting position of p3 p4 p4 um, don't know where i got p3 from we've got nicholas latifi in front of us who is in p3 but at this early stage of the race just feeling out the conditions just seeing uh what the car can or cannot do and it's certainly can't really do much at this stage. There's just wheel spin for days in the traction zone. Third gear, like I said, is just an absolute nightmare. Um, in the early stages of this race, I was endeavoring just to short shift early out of second and especially third gear. But when I did that, I was leaving myself a little bit open to Luca Giotto behind, especially out of turn one. I was struggling quite a bit there. Uh, pushing the limits with not only the traction, but also the, uh, <laughs> the track limits as well. And we get a warning for that. Also clipping the um, Ken Ben win or bottle at corner, Raskas, from a few years ago. Shout out to YouTuber Championship. I put out a tasty little tweet about that today. But anyway, regardless, we are pressing on in this Grand Prix, or at least we're doing our best to do so. We're losing touch with the top three, and um, I feel at this stage, the track is starting to get a little bit drier. And this may well be the turning point. As you can see, we put in a, a personal best there. It doesn't really count because it was a corner cutted lap but uh, I'm starting to find my feet now in this race and you can see I'm actually starting to break away from the train that I developed behind me going purple to the middle sector which is exactly what you want to see the gap was about three and a half seconds to Latifi ahead we get ever so close to nudging that outside barrier through the swimming pool chicane and again we put in a personal best we are now starting to close in to the leaders as we lose the back end again in third gear which is not great but uh, yeah, we're getting to the point where we need to make a decision on strategy. We can either dive it in early for an undercut on wets, or we could stick it out until maybe the dry tyres are required. We've now got a failure for uh, Nick DeVries here, I think. 
I'm not too sure. I think it is Nick DeVries. So that is an unfortunate uh, retirement from him. And uh, that's not going to do his championship any good. That's only going to help us in our quest to take the F2 title. We move into P3. Virtual safety car is taken away. We've actually got safety car and virtual safety car on this weekend. And that is because uh, the sprint race is now a 50% race. I'm just testing with that to see if I am going to leave that on. But for the moment, it does mean that we can have safety cars now, which could throw an extra element into the mix. Okay, cool. So five, ten minutes left of rain. Uh, the tyres are getting on a bit in terms of their wear. I probably could get about three, four laps out of this maximum. Uh, but given that Monaco is a much longer lap, and especially in the rain here, it may not be as long as what you think in terms of waiting for the dry tyres. 74% on the front rear tyre. This is getting dangerously close to punctured territory. And now we're back into the clutches of Luca Giotto from behind, as you can see from the helicopter shot. A brilliant little take on this circuit and how close it is uh, between us and every single barrier, just pushing the limits at every turn. But uh, now we have the leaders in. Uh, Latifi is now in. Uh, Luca Giotto dives it in for another set of wet tyres. We've got Nikita Mazepin out of this Grand Prix, and that could spell a safety car, or at least I hope it is. We've now got the call for dry tyres, so we're going to call uh, into the pit lane at the end of this lap now. We've actually hit the wall. Such is the lack of grip and these old wet tyres. But I don't know if that's going to hurt. I don't think it'll hurt us, to be honest, because we've now gained a pit stop over the rest of the field. We'll change the front wing in the pit stop. And we should, in theory, keep the lead of this Grand Prix. Since our camera is 10 seconds behind, a pit, uh, pit stop for a front wing change will cost us an extra 5 seconds. So this should be okay. Front wing is being changed. Tires are not, though. Tires are not being changed. That's an issue. I think there's so little people in the pit stop, um, in the pit crew, that they can't do more than one thing at once. And so we've been held massively. That's a 16-second pit stop plus uh, the hold in the lane. So we have not actually held on to, or I don't, I, I don't know. I feel like we might be under threat here of losing the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix, such as uh, the length of that pit stop. Here comes both of the uh, dams drivers for their pit stop. Latifi is having to stack behind his teammate, um, which is not ideal for him. DRS has been disabled, so he came in at the perfect time for our strategy, but Latifi is going to be last at this rate. Absolute calamity uh, for the dams team. They were looking at a 1-2 here in Monaco, and now it is, it's just going up in smoke for uh, one side of the garage. Sets a camera rejoins on the circuit and he takes the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. My pit stop was so slow because of the front wing change that we lost 10 seconds more. We lost 15 seconds to, to uh, set a camera. That's unbelievable. Leading by 10 before the pit stop phases, we come out five seconds behind. That is amazing that we have lost that much time. The lack of personnel in the pit lane has really cost us there, but now we have to chase down Sete Camera if we want to win this Monaco Grand Prix. I'm getting more and more in tune with this circuit and with this car and what it can do, and the conditions are only improving as the track, you know, is drying up, uh, that we're just trading fast laps myself and Sete Camera every single lap. Whatever he can do, I can do that a little bit better. Um, it is a little bit unfair, as when he goes around, I can go around at the same corner and it's a little bit drier for me so of course I'm going to be setting purple laps as opposed to him but you know we are catching him regardless uh, in this Grand Prix but we're coming up to the last lap of the race unfortunately I've got a three second time penalty for corner cutting but now since I've already got that penalty I've got an extra three warnings in the bank that I can use and I'm just going absolutely ballistic on this last lap Jeff is telling me about warnings I do not give a crap we're trying to chase down set a camera to at least get close maybe even overtake him if we can but there are limits to what we can achieve around this racetrack and uh, the gap was just too large it's going to be p2 in the monaco grand prix set a camera has driven a fantastic race we have two but the mistakes at the midpoint of the grand prix just proved too much for us to win i'll take it and I can see our drivers making their way out now. It's been a sublime team performance, and it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Dams are your winners today. 
So well done to Sete Camera. Um, you know, Dams, they had it under control. Uh, they just made a big blunder on the strategy. Like, there was like two laps between me putting on the dry tires. I think two laps, but there were... The TV could have came in on the same lap that I did because DRS got enabled like 20 seconds after I came out of the lane. So there's no excuses. And he ends up in P9, which is an absolute disaster because not only does he miss out on pole for the reverse grid race, but he'll be starting from P9 in the next race too. Unbelievable. We'll be on the front row. No, we won't be. We'll be P7 for the reverse grid race. So we're going to have some overtaking to do in the sprint race. So I am very much looking forward to that. Roll on the race. We're returning after yesterday's feature race for the final event of the weekend, the sprint. Down on the grid below us, the drivers are spending their last few minutes getting ready. Very soon, they're going to kick this race off in dramatic fashion. OK, don't try anything silly into one. It's going to be crazy in there. Just do your best to stay out of trouble. I'm really excited for this race. P7 at Monaco. We've got we've only got slower drivers in front of us, and we've got 15 laps to do. So that is a long, long old race for a for a sprint race. So let's see if we can win this race from P7. We're about to prove if Monaco is impossible to overtake or not. So away we go for the sprint race of the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. And it looks like a it's, a... it's an all right start. We can get away quite well in these F2 cars. They have a much wider uh, range of getting away well uh, off the line, which is uh, nice for us. And we hold on to B7. We've got Louis Delatraz up next. Let's see if we can go on the inside. It's a casino square. He didn't know that I was there, I would say. That was very, very close. Too close for comfort. Front wing looks intact. So that is all that we can really ask for. And we can press on with this race. Just breathing a sigh of relief now as we get to the Fairmont hairpin. Average speeds are very, very slow around this circuit and they are, they feel doubly slow in these F2 cars. It just feels like you're driving around a Tesco's car park, really, just trying to find a space. Um, space is a premium around this circuit and we are gonna dive for any gap that we can get uh, in this race. We need to make these moves early because although we have 15 laps, We've got to find seven positions to get to the six positions to get to the lead and um, you know these cars are closely matched and this is a spec series this is an f1 that we're not driving you know the the luxuries of our old you know f1 car which have advantages over other teams we have to do this purely on raw talent and we go around the outside into mirabeau a, a, an overtaking zone which i never really make use of in the f1 series but the AI seem, or at least my competitors seem, seem to be a little bit slower around this section of the circuit. And we get that done around the outside at Mirabeau, no less, into P6. And now we can set after Mick Schumacher in the Prima. So let's see what we can do. Uh, in third sector is uh, obviously the OP sector for us. Uh, in the F1 cars, it's, it seems to be less of an, an advantage here because I, ca I can't really flow through the third sector as well as what I can in an F2 car. You can't actually cut the middle sector or third sector chicane in these cars because the cars aren't as wide. So um, the average speeds there are a little bit lower. So I have to find other avenues to get these overtakes done. And it looks like it's going to be middle sector, which is an odd one for me because, yeah, like I said, I never really overtake here. But let's see if we can do a dive on Schumacher into... Uh, Mirabeau once again, this time we take to the inside a much more conventional route and that is, in every sense of the word, a dive bomb <laughs> into into the Mirabeau. Um, there is, there is a, an element of cooperation that has to be done here by, you know, the driver in front because if they don't yield here, we crash and uh, we get through for P5. Thank you very much to Mick who is uh, very cooperative in that overtake. Next up is Hubert. Still got 11 laps in this race, so we are making pretty good headway, but I wanted to get past those quicker guys early on so that I could leave myself time um, to, you know, make these moves stick a little bit more effectively. Uh, as we get closer and closer to the front, it's actually going to get easier to overtake these guys because the, 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 the speed gap is, is that much larger. We've got the 
you know, back end of the top 10 runners from the feature race uh, yesterday at the front. Um, it's good that we've got past the likes of Louis Delatraz, we've got past Schumacher, and now we just need to get past Hubert. And then I think after we get past Hubert, it'll get progressively easier. Giotto is no slouch either, but the top three, uh, we are considerably faster than those lots. So um, it's just a case of getting past Hubert now. As you can see on the helicopter shot, getting very, very close into the third sector. We're setting up a move here into Raskatz if we can, diving to the inside. And Hubert does very well uh, under brakes. He just about held on, but the traction that we had on the inside was that much better, and we are through for P4. Is he on board from Hubert? You can see, leaving a lot of space. He knew that we were coming. He was looking in the mirrors, and we actually squeezed him more than I thought I did. Right up against the wall there. Here's the replay again. Side by side. I squeezed him a little bit too much there, but it was just about clean, and we are through for P4. Though this move isn't quite done yet. I thought Hubert was going to come back at me there on the run into turn one. I didn't get a great exit out of the final corner. Given that I was kind of pinched on the inside, but we managed to hold on regardless at the halfway stage of this race. Next up is Giotto, and we're going to see if we can maybe pull a similar move. We are fairly close as we head into Raskas, but that would have been a bit reckless, I think. So we'll hold station for now and wait for an opportunity to present itself. Luca looking a little bit slower in the high speed corners as opposed to Hubert as we uh, get a run into the swimming pool chicane and we get the move done around the outside of the most unconventional area of the track. I've never made a, uh, an overtake work there, but we've just made it happen somehow. Giotto which just had no momentum at the high speed, left the door open and we took that advantage. It was inside, then it eventually turned to the outside and we got it done at Raskas. But, uh, wow, what a, what, wow, okay, um, these F2 cars, although they're pro programmed by the same, you know, the same AI as the F1 cars, just the, the characteristics of these F2 cars means that overtaking zones are somewhat different to what we're seeing in F1, even, like, yeah, it's, it's mad that, uh, we're pulling off moves in the areas that we are, it's, uh, it's quite crazy, we set a fast up at the Grand Prix, 1 minute 22.2, even though we are tucked in with a bit of traffic. Everyone else is kind of in traffic as well, given the nature of this reverse grid race, but we're making it work for us here. Four laps left to go in this race, and uh, we need to get past Matsushita pretty much now. Do we dive him into Mirabeau? You bet we do. Up the inside. Not quite as dramatic as what we did on Schumacher. It was a bit more of a clinical move this time around. We knew that we uh, had the car advantage, well, not the car advantage, but the pace advantage over him. And uh, we did it a little bit more calmly this time around. Very close to the barrier as well on the exit of the Novel Chicane. Engineer wanting to give me an alternate strategy change, which was exactly the same as the strategy we're running at the moment, which is a no stop as we lose the back end massively uh, exiting Casino Square. But uh, we managed to hold on. Looking for some avenues now on Bujong here. And I hope I haven't uh, butchered that pronunciation. This is for the lead of the race. We're now pressuring in, much like we did to Luca Giotto a few laps ago. Does he leave the door open as well into the final chicane? Yes, he does. He cuts the um, a curbing there. And now we have the inside for the Raskas corner. Very, very narrowly touching there through the penultimate corner. And we are through for the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Have you, have you ever seen a comeback such as this? Even though it is a reverse grid race, it has been quite quite the overtaking fest. I was hoping that I would get to the lead of this race, but I didn't think I would... I didn't think I'd actually pull it off. But there we go. We're now pushing to see if we can better that fastest lap that we set earlier as we lose the back end in the first sector. Just about held on to that. We'll need to get a replay of that as we exit Casino Square. This is actually quite wild. I don't know where this kind of came from. We were just... We just had a little bit of lock on as we went to... Um, full acceleration and uh, yeah we nearly died there so here's the slow motion replay this is what really tells it you can see we just get over the bump there and just too much throttle too much steering angle at the same time and uh, we had to pull off the mother of all saves to get this done you can see just how close it was between the inside barrier there and our right rear tire we just hold on to that and keep going that has got to be one of the saves of the century you can see there just how close we actually got to the barrier, and on photo mode, we actually go through the curb. 
somehow. So that was a lucky escape. We're going to calm it down now and just bring it home for the victory of this sprint race. It's been, a, it's been quite a chaotic race weekend. All the antics in the feature race coming back through the field, the, the closeness of the barrier just uh, 30 seconds ago, and now we wipe off a bit of our side pod uh, our end plate. I'm losing it all now, but thankfully we are not losing the victory of this race. It is P1 in the sprint race. You worked hard for that one. Congratulations. GG. So another fantastic victory for Campos today. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? What a race, Alex. Every so often we get a spectacular like we did today. Less focus on strategy and time management and more on just pushing it to the limits and battling it out for those top positions. I think what we experienced today is evidence of why Formula 2 is continuing to draw into crowds and expect today's race will definitely be turning a few more heads to the series. I can see them on their way out to the podium now. Campos have come a really long way in this sport and what a special race this was to see them earn the top spot. It's victory in the sprint race, but we really did have to earn that. From P7 on the grid, we have proven that overtaking is not impossible in Monaco. It was a, a bit of a wayward and a bit of a wild weekend, uh, not only in the, in the feature race where we you know, we chipped off our front wing right at the, the crucial moment. That did cost us victory in the end. We lost our front wing again. Uh, this time on the last lap, not so costly. Uh, but we come away with a victory. Uh, I think going forward, I do need to calm things down a little bit. Things just got a little bit out of control this weekend. Um, it's very just, it's uncharacteristic. I, I like to pride myself on never crashing around Monaco. But we did twice this weekend. But it's a race victory. Uh, fastest lap along the way. Uh, we will hopefully extend our championship lead over the rest of the field. It's now 31 points. So uh, heading into this weekend, I think it was a 17-point lead, 15-point lead, something like that. We've extended it quite a bit over Luca Giotto, who now moves into P2 in the driver's standings. Uh, Set of camera couldn't make his way through the field, and that was costly. Uh, P8 for him today. Again, Latifi, not a great race for him as well. Um, getting caught up after the mistake by his team. That really did cost him, and um, he falls further behind in the standings. But that has been this race weekend of Formula 2 action. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. Uh, the response so far on this series started off really well. Then it kind of dipped down through episodes 2 and 3. So hopefully you guys... Uh, seeing these in your sub box. I don't know if that's the case or not, but um, if I feel like if this video doesn't do too well in terms of a response, then I think this might be the last episode. But we'll wait and see. I do want to continue this series. I am having a lot of fun and a change of pace, but it may not be to everyone's liking, but that's completely fine. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, I'll see you next time.